channel um today i'm gonna read you some of the summaries i think yeah two summaries of ronnie watts's interview well two different interviews because they interviewed him the one time before chris confessed and then the one time after okay so this is the one first i'm gonna read the first one i'm gonna read is the one before Chris confessed. It was that t it was that Wednesday that he confessed is when this interview took place, you know, after Chris had picked him up from the airport. But this is it kind of coincides with when Chris is taking the polygraph and then they interview Ronnie in a different room. So, okay. So it's just going to be like a summary. So, Ronnie was notified by his son Chris on Monday, 8/13/2018 that Chris's wife and two young daughters were missing. Chris was unsure where they went and or where they were currently located. Chris advised Ronnie that his wife did not take her cell phone, purse, and vehicle. Chris thought that his wife and children may have went to stay with a friend, but Chris did not tell Ronnie who that friend was. Chris advised Ronnie that he and his wife had a separation discussion prior to Chris going to work on Monday. Ronnie arrived to assist Chris in his search for his wife and children on 8-15. Ronnie arrived at DIA around 9.15 to 9.20 a.m. and was picked up by Chris. Ronnie advised that Chris and his wife, Shanann, had met in North Carolina and were married there. They moved to Colorado approximately seven or eight years ago. Chris and Shanann have two daughters, Bella and Cece, as well as a baby on the way. Shanann recently visited North Carolina with her children for approximately six weeks to see family and friends. Chris met them for approximately one week during the last portion of the visit. Shanann stayed with Ronnie and his wife at their residence during the first part of the visit. During the second week, Shanann and Ronnie's wife had a blowout, and Shanann left with her children to stay at her parents' house. Ronnie described the argument between Shanann and his wife as a disagreement over dealing with the children. After Shanann and the children left Ronnie's residence, Ronnie did not see them again for the remainder of their trip. Ronnie advised that Shanann went back to Colorado after the North Carolina visit for a day or two and then went on a business trip to Arizona for a conference. Shanann works for Lavelle Thrive Nutrition as a salesperson. Shanann went on the business trip with her friend, Nicole Utah. Shanann is very active online and has a lot of Facebook friends. Ronnie is unaware of any suspicious activity involving Shanann. Ronnie advised that Chris has one sister, Jamie, who lives in North Carolina. Chris works for Anadarko Petroleum as an oil and gas worker. Ronnie is unaware of any financial difficulties that Chris and Shanann were facing. Ronnie describes Shanann as controlling, narcissistic, and possibly bipolar. Ronnie has not witnessed any verbal or physical altercations between Chris and Shanann. Ronnie is unaware of any threats made between Chris and Shanann. Ronnie feels that most of the issues between Shanann and Chris are caused by Shanann. Ronnie advised that Shanann has some physical health problems, including lupus and spine issues. Ronnie is unaware of Shanann receiving any counseling or psychological treatment. Ronnie believes that Chris typically leaves for work around 5 to 5.30 a.m. and returns home around 4 to 5 p.m. Chris usually picks up the kids from daycare on his way home. Shanann typically drops the kids off at daycare in the morning. Ronnie believes that Chris and Shanann's house is currently for sale and that they have talked about getting separated. Chris and Shanann have no other relatives who reside in Colorado. Ronnie was unsure why Chris and Shanann moved to Colorado from North Carolina. Ronnie does not know where Shanann or her children may have gone. Ronnie could not provide any additional details regarding their location. Ronnie was very cooperative. Okay, so here is the summary of his second interview. Ronnie has never known his son Chris to have used drugs, have any mental health issues to include depression, nor have violent tendencies. To his knowledge, Chris has never taken any medicine for mental health issues and was a strong student in school. Chris participated in many sports growing up and prioritized that in his schoolwork over dating. Chris was asked to prom by a girl instead of asking someone himself. Recently, wow, wait a minute. Oh, see? I mean, I, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with, you know, a girl asking a guy to prom or asking him out. But, like, that just shows you kind of how he... See? 
I feel like that's, that kind of just shows you how he's attracted to these alpha type women, even, you know, in high school. You know, I mean, I think it definitely has a t so much to do with how his mom was. So now he's attracted to these type of women. And look, you know, the, you know, his prom day asked him, you know, he, you know, he wasn't the one that was making the decisions, calling the shots, you know, definitely not the alpha male. He was definitely a beta. He liked the alpha women and which is fine. But see, every time I think. I'm reminded of that characteristic about him. It makes me think that NK did have something to do with it. Because it's like I like I said, I'm like teeter and I go back and forth, back and forth. And then when I remember how he's like the beta male and he likes the alpha women, uh, you know, a woman to take charge, to make the decisions, to, you know, like that he couldn't have done this on his own. He would have had to have NK there guiding him and telling him what to do, you know? So, huh, it's like... I know in my last video, what, last week, I was kind of leaning the other way, like, I don't know, right now I'm thinking Chris just did it. And now after reading through some of this discovery and reminded on, you know, what type of person he is and what type of person he's attracted to and, like, how, you know, it just, it, 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 now it's making me think that she was involved. That there, it would be hard for him to be able to do this by himself and to make the call those shots and to make these decisions and to actually do it, you know, like to put that at the plan into action. Like he wouldn't have been able to do that by himself. So, so now I'm uh, thinking, yeah, yeah, she definitely did help him. Until something else comes apart. It's like I just keep going. Man. We just need to give her a polygraph. You know. She never saw. We just. Somebody needs to interview her. Interrogate her again. Something. Because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there. That are feeling the same way I am. Where they just keep going back and forth. Where like. You know. They read something. And they think. Oh, okay. No. She she didn't. Maybe she manipulated them. But you know. She didn't. You know. Have any. She didn't take part directly in this plan or, you know, in this murder. And then, you know, you're reminded of something or something new is brought to your attention where you're like, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, now maybe she did. So now I'm thinking, yeah, she did. Okay, so let me finish reading this. Um, so it says, Chris was asked to prom by a girl instead of asking someone himself. Recently, Chris had lost a lot of weight through following the weight loss program Shanann was promoting. Ronnie felt that Chris did not want to participate in it, but was doing it because Shanann was forcing him to. But, I mean, I think he ended up loving it because he was liking that, having that body and, you know, the way that that thrive made him feel, giving him energy now, you know, some girls were checking him out. He had NK and just... So, no, she wasn't forcing him to do anything. I think she just, you know, kind of helped him make good decisions, you know? Like, he was so not able to just, you know, make these decisions on his own. He needed, like, a woman to kind of push him into things, you know, for, not in a bad way, but, like, if not, he wouldn't do anything for himself, you know, so, and it, it pushed him into good things, so, he kind of needed that, because it's just how, you know, his mom did it his whole life, and it's just how he needed, you know, he needed a woman to be able to do that, and the sad thing is, is Shanann was trying to push him in, a, in the right direction to better himself and to, you know for to do good things and you know to help his health and just help him to be you know all around better person and to you know maybe you know and I mean I'm sure she possibly could have I mean I don't know from what the information we have but maybe even help to push him into like 
that field coordinator position. You never know. Like, he was a rover, I guess, and then he got promoted. So maybe she kind of pushed him into being able to get promoted to do whatever he had to do to work towards that, you know, or to apply for it or whatever the case may be, you know. So she was actually, you know, pushing him in a good way, and he needed that push. Like Randy was saying, he needed that to actually make decisions and to better himself. But... I think in the long run, he wasn't willing to put in the work himself. He was expecting her to do it all, you know, and he only gave so much. I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying that what he was was doing as far as work and stuff wasn't. I don't know. I mean, remember Randy? That's what Randy was thinking, you know, that he, he wanted his life, but he wasn't willing to put in the work. So I'm not sure about that factor if he wasn't willing to put in the work I don't know enough but it makes sense but as far as him needing that push and that guidance and that alpha alpha personality for a woman to help guide him through and you know help make decisions and just take care of the finances and make you know, certain decisions that he wouldn't just take it upon himself to do. So, but then you, and Kay comes in his life and sees what kind of guy he is and how easy he is to be manipulated, you know. So, she used that in a bad way, you know. So, she, she you know, man, I can make him do whatever you know basically so she actually used that power and that his submissiveness and her alphaness I know that's not a word but to her or to wh whoever he's in a relationship with um she used that in a bad way to get what she wanted and possibly <sighs> in the worst way ever if she used that to do what we think she might have done you know so yeah so Shanann was doing it to better him she was doing it to better the NK was doing it to better herself using Chris to better herself so okay sorry I got it. took you on a little tangent there but um got off track maybe but hopefully not hopefully you follow me and I made somewhat sense but now I gotta find where I just left off um okay so okay so yeah so Shanann was oh yeah so recently Chris had lost a lot of weight through following the weight loss program Shanann was promoting Watts felt that Chris or no Ronnie felt that Chris did not want to participate in it but was doing it because Shanann was forcing him to that's bullcrap it was more like she pushed him to do it in a good way. Like it was something that he wanted to do, but he didn't have that drive to do it. And, you know, something that something that was going to better him and make him healthier, you know. And he just needed that, you know, that guidance and that push. So, no, it's just, I, I don't agree that she forcing him to do that no she helped him to to be able to to do that you know what i'm saying see to ronnie it could have came across it as oh she's forcing him when maybe she was like pushing him to do it maybe she brought it up a bunch or i mean who knows what the situation but i'm thinking you know for ronnie to said that maybe she was just like um she kept bugging him about it and kept uh on the weight okay let's see so Chris had lost the weight let's go. okay and then maybe like if he got off track she would keep trying to see like make sure that he's not you know like keep maybe hassle him like okay did you do this did you take this did you exercise maybe getting on him but not meaning in a bad way to actually help him in the long run you know what I'm saying so Ronnie could be looking at it like oh she was forcing him but it was like actually came out of love you know not forcing him but to to 
try to get him to do something you know deep down he wants to do he just doesn't have that drive to do it so just pushing him so to, to keep him motivated you know so anyway so Ronnie believed that neither Chris nor Shanann wanted another child uh, why would Ronnie even say or think that that's I don't know man I'm not liking what he's saying in these interviews Ronnie Ronnie described Shannon as being extremely bipolar and had paranoid tendencies toward his wife. That's bull crap. I mean, we all can see, like, wow. He's completely, like, brainwashed by his wife, you know, and manipulated that she convinced him, or at least maybe he, Ronnie does know better, but he knows, okay, I better say this. This is what I need to say. This is what... I, I'm supposed to say, and I'll get in trouble if I don't say if I say anything different. But anyway, so yeah, so he says that you know Ronnie describes Shannon as being extremely bipolar and had a paranoid tendency towards his wife. Wow, the grandmother of their children, exactly the grandmother of their children that you were gonna feed them nuts and didn't even care when Cece was allergic to them. So a grandmother should not do that. A, grand, a loving grandmother would not even think to do that. But yet you're going to risk your grandchild's life just for revenge against your daughter-in-law that you treat like crap and that you want to get one up on. You're going to risk your, your grandchild's life just to get one up on your, your daughter-in-law, just to get under her skin. Now what kind of grandmother is that? Okay. In in one instance, Shanann accused Ronnie's wife of trying to kill her kids by exposing them to nuts for which they had an allergy. Yeah, exactly. Like, how, how isn't Ronnie seeing that? That's what... How are you saying that Shanann is bipolar and paranoid towards your wife when it's your wife that is exposing her grand daughter your granddaughter too to pets which she's allergic to that's an allergy you don't mess with like you could die from that reaction you know anyway a few weeks prior when Shanann was last in North Carolina it was very contentious and Shanann spent the majority of the time at her parents house refusing to allow Ronnie and his wife to see the grandchildren yeah because she did let you guys see them and your wife wanted to be just put her pride or I don't even know what you would call it. It's just that's just evil to just taunt your daughter in law like that. Like and then Chris's sister putting out the bowl of nuts. I mean that's just uh yeah, and then so you're, you guys having ice cream with the nuts in it right in front of a little girl that's allergic to nuts. And she doesn't know any better. All she has to do is take one bite of those. And you never know. Those EpiPens aren't 100 proof like it is not. Sometimes they might not work. So, so yeah. You put, if you look at it. It does look like that she was trying to kill Cece, you know, like it's something that could have resulted in it if she would have eaten nuts. So how is that that crazy for Shanann to do that? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. So anyway, um yeah, I wouldn't have let them see my kids either. If they were that irresponsible or cared that much about getting like a one-up on me because they hated me, so haha, -ha, I'm gonna put nuts out because I want to get her, you know, that you're willing to risk my daughter's life, then yeah, you're not gonna see my kids either. I mean, that's just... 
common sense, you know. Okay, so Ronnie could not reconcile while Chris admitted to killing Shanann. Maybe because he did, and he killed his two daughters and his unborn son. <sighs> Toward the conclusion of the interview, Ronnie played a video on his phone for agents, which showed his wife playing with Chris and Shanann's two daughters. A copy of the audio recording is maintained on a DVD, an original copy. Okay, it's stored in the Frederick Police Department. I haven't came across that. On There's so many videos. I thought I, I went through most of them, but there's a few that I I missed. It's just, it's hard to keep them all organized the way they have them, but I would like to see that video, which video that was. Of So what is it, Cindy playing with the kids? Yeah, so Ronnie played a video on his phone, showed his wife, which would be her. Okay, it's. I don't know. All right, guys. So that is those interviews. Um, let me know what you guys think. All right, guys. Have a good one, and we will see you next time. Bye.